Hello, welcome to School by Metaroo Science in A39. And this is our school. And you will be accompanying us on a virtual tour of these nine, nine floors of this building. And accompanying me is this beautiful girl, Winnie. So come and join with us. Hey, Winnie, is this the first time you've been here? Yes, yeah, the first time. Wow, this is a new facility. It's only been built 10 years ago. Wow, I'm excited about it. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have lots of uh, co facilities and lab spaces in, in the School of Biomedical Sciences. Mm -hmm. wow. So I want to take you to visit. The, the first one is called the uh, Imaging Core, mm -hmm. where we have big microscopic instruments, electron microscope, scanning electron microscopes, mm. and confocal microscope located there. It's very expensive okay. from the microscope. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a long corridor here. Yeah, it's very really long, so, <laughs> because this place is quite big. Yeah. So uh, the first uh, building, uh, the first facility we'll show you is actually the imaging core, the scan electron microscope. Oh, so here. Yes, it's here. So wow. this is our scan electron microscope. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, we have a column with a vacuum and the electrons are bombarding into that vacuum onto our specimen and deflecting it onto our detector. Mm. And this is what you see. Wow, it's is a it flat. Like, wow. Yeah, it's flat. Very good. Yeah. So we've been studying hard. <laughs> <laughs> so what you see here is what we call a compound eye. Mm. So it has many, many lenses. And this is what you see if you have a, a scan electron microscope. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of, a, of a fly, yeah. but you normally can't not see that with your eye. Oh yeah, this, this angle is beautiful. Is it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we go in and see another electron microscope. Uh -huh. Now we're going to see the transmission electron microscope. Have you seen a transmission electron microscope before, Winnie? Uh, no. Well, basically what the transmission electron microscope is, it has a vacuum, long vacuum, where we build up electrons and this electron pass through the vacuum and bombard the specimen. So inside the specimen, the, the electron will penetrate and there you can see on the screen what you can actually, actually see inside the specimen. Okay, so this is our cell culture facility, uh, Winnie. So come have a look. Well, hello, Elaine. What are you doing? Well, I'm culturing some stem cells. Oh, stem cells. Okay. Are they growing well? Yes, they're growing pretty well. Can maybe we have a look under the microscope? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we have a look first. Okay. Yeah. Is it growing well? Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Wow. Very nice colonies. Hmm, it's good. So I can actually use this for my clean food project. Yeah. For example, making uh, snails. Yes. Okay, Winnie, this is our biofabrication core. Mm. Uh, uh, let's go have a look inside. So in the biofabrication core, we have a micro contact printing, which is one of the latest instruments, the only, probably the only instrument in the whole Hong Kong. And this is to create surfaces where we can culture cells and, uh, and interrogate cells and see how the cells behave on these printed surfaces. So this is called a micro contact printer. Our next instrument is a um, 3D bioprinting. Printer, which is completely different from what you see on the market, 3D printer. It's a 3D bio printer. So actually we're printing stem cells. And um, oh, there's something that we printed. Wow, that's is that nice? Wow, it's so cute. Yeah. Isn't it? Do you know what that is? It's a snail? It's a snail, yes. Oh. So what we, some what some of our PI, our, our professors been doing was to get some snail stem cells, mix it with some seaweeds. And then it printed into that shape, like an escargot, where it doesn't have a shell, but you can eat it completely without a shell. So 
these people are actually trying to make what we call clean food from snail stem cells. And this is where it's made. We have one container filled with uh, snail stem cells and the next container filled with seaweed extract. And then we set the program ready and it will print. And that's what you have. Wow, that's cute. Really? Can I have it? Uh, um, <laughs> no, it's fine. <pretty. laughs> <laughs> no, you can have it. Uh, yeah, thank you, you Paul. Yeah, you can let your mum eat it. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um, so, oh, we have a student working here. So, mm -hmm. one of the students saying, hello. hello. What are you doing? Um, I'm actually making uh, what we call an organ on the chip. And this is actually a microfluidic pepper. And so, uh, why we are uh, why we are going to make this uh, organ on the chip? Because we can use it for um, many uh, purposes. For example, drug testing. And as you can see, we can actually see different cells inside different chambers. For example, we can see the heart cells here, or the lung cells, or the liver cells here. Oh, that's very very useful because that means we can do the drug testing on an artificial human yeah. before we actually try on human. So it'll be very very safe for people then. Yeah. Well, well done, Alex. Okay, well done. Thank you. Winnie, this is our histology call. This is where we do all the histology in this building. So let's have come and have a look at look at what we have. Okay. Well, over here, this is where we embed the specimen into wax blocks. Uh, so you can see the wax block here. So here we have a block of specimens that we can then cut. Okay. And actually, what you see here is so a student actually cutting specimens into thin slices. See? And then they mount it onto glass slide and then stain it up, and then you're able to see what's inside the specimen. Oh, have you seen this? Oh, Ooh, is it horrible? No, what? It? Oh, these are mouse, mouse fetus. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what, what we do here is that you can't see anything in that mouse fetus, but when we, after, after we stain, you can actually see inside the mouse fetus, there are actually bones, ribs, and the limbs of the mouse. And also we can see the skull of the mouth. Is that nice? Wow, that's interesting. That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> You're not scared? Uh, okay to me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. So that's what we do here. And we also see some students uh, cutting specimens and mounting it onto glass slides. And this is a different technique here. So instead of using wax, we can actually use frozen samples and you actually do what we call, call cryo sectioning. So that's what they do it here. Okay, come, come have a look. So there are more students here cutting specimens. So the wax block that I showed you, how it was made, um, so actually the student put it into this uh, cryo start and then it cut very, very thin slices. So we need thin slices so we can actually see what's inside, another light microscope. So these are what the students are doing. Okay, so you saw the student cutting the specimens, then we stain it and then we put it into a microscope to see what's inside. So come and have a look what our, some of our students are doing. See? So I think what that is, do you think, what do you think that is? We need to idea. <laughs> I think it looks like elastic fibres, so, so it looks like, a, it looks like an archer or something like that. Mm. Yeah, so this is what we do after, after we made all these cuts and stains, we have to capture the image. So this is what the students do. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is our animal core. We keep a lot of animals here. And we keep mice and uh, rats and rabbits. But here we keep aquatic animals like fish. So come and have a look at fish. Okay. Really. Wow. Oh, is that, isn't this good? Spectacular. <laughs> yes. So we have a lot of fish here, hundreds of fish. And what we have here 
uh, zebrafish. You know why they're called zebrafish? Because mm -hmm. their pattern? Yes. If you look at it very closely, these fish, they have stripes, like a zebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you know why we use zebrafish? No. Why? Well, zebrafish, they have a, have a fast life cycle. So that means they can give uh, birth to eggs and they become bigger fish in a couple of months. So you can do studies, genetic studies, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Any special of this zebrafish right now? Well, this, this particular uh, zebrafish have their genes knocked out. So we're going to see what happens when they knock out a specific gene and then how it affects, for example, the eye, uh, the body of the animal, the inside of the animal. So that's something we can do very, very quickly using zebrafish. Yeah. Oh, so this is a proteomic core, really. And um, we study proteins and try to identify what the protein is. Mm -hmm. So we need high-end equipment, state-of-the-art equipment. And we have this here. This instrument is called MSMS Tof Tof Sectometer. And um, what we do is that we take some protein, we put it into the chamber here, and then the laser fires at the protein and will break up the amino acids, uh, protein to amino acids uh, uh, fragments and then the fragment would then fly into a column and stretch all the way to here so the smallest fragment would travel fastest the longest fragment would, would travel slower so therefore we'd be able to identify what that protein is so that's very important for uh, biological research I see yes okay so we need this is our flow cytometry core so let's go in and see. Okay. There you go, ladies first. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in the flow cytometry core, we have all these equipment. They call flow cytometer. And uh, oh, we have a student working here. So this is the flow cytometer. And with the flow cytometer, we are able to sort out cells. For example, maybe if you have a mixture of cancer cells and normal cells, you can actually put it into this machine and this flow, can flow uh, sort these two different population of cells. And this is what the students are doing. So, you can see here, they put in the sample into that machine and then uh, they have little drops of cells passing through the, uh, that uh, the, um, the capillary and the laser would deflect the different types of cells and they could then collect it. Is that very useful? Mm -hmm. yes. So that's what they're doing now, the gatings. Yep. So Winnie, how did you enjoy the visit? Uh, today we see it's so impressive to see different kind of experiment and laboratory. Mm. Yes, um, we actually put in a lot of effort to build up all this facility and put in all the big instruments and the uh, state of our equipment, all the labs, everything, so that the, our scientists can work hard and produce really, really good results. Um, so, you know, please come visit us if you're ever in the School of our Medical Science and I could personally show you around this facility. So, um, is there any questions you want to ask me before we end, end this visit? Yeah, um, how do you describe the major achievement and milestone attained in the School of Biomedical Science in the first decade of development? Well, you'd be quite surprised to learn that 10 years ago, the School of Biomedical Science did not exist. And I saw this building 10 years ago being built in a, in a, in a wasteland and, uh, to, to what is now. So we have now installed wonderful labs, wonderful core laboratories, we put all the staff, so we're doing really good research now. So I'm quite happy with what, what happened for the past 10 years. Mm. And in the face of ever-changing landscape of biomedical research or even of the role, what do you think how we should gear up um, for many challenges ahead and every opportunity to move forward to the next level of excellence? Yes, um, so this is, this is the purpose of the core lab with all these state of uh, art equipment because we are ready to take on any challenges, especially now when we have COVID. Some of these um, COVID infections, some of our core laboratory uh, equipment are currently being used by scientists trying to overcome this uh, pandemic. So, um, so we're really uh, happy about this. 
Mm. And for yourself, um, any meaningful experience in the university that you can share with us? Yes. Um, well, I've been in my job for now 32 years in the CHK. And uh, the most satisfying achievement is me training, uh, training these students from when they were at year one to they, to they become doctors at year six. So it's very, very satisfying to see how they grow up to be uh, top-end doctors so that can help Hong Kong and help the society and help treat people who are in need. So that's my most satisfying uh, achievement. Oh, thank you Professor Leeds for your time to show me around the laboratory and I'm so excited to the future of the School of Biomedical Science. Oh, you're most welcome. So please do come again. Yes. Um, I'll show you uh, even better equipment next time. Hopefully yes. and our building become even better. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we can do some lunch or something. Oh, yeah. thank you okay, Professor Leeds. <laughs> okay, bye. bye.